Taxstone, welcome back. Beloved. Yeah, Beloved man. Life. Everything great. Everything great. Finally got a chance to listen to the Meek Mill interview. Yeah. Great interview. Thank you. Great Appreciate interview. It. Great interview. Appreciate it. I like that, you know, the fact that it was done in the Wraith, I thought brought like an extra dimension to it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> that was Meek's idea. Yeah? Yeah. No, it was, it was dope. It was dope. And it, it seemed like he was real, real open to, to talk about everything. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't, you know, he didn't really say like, yo, I'm not talking about this or talking about that. You know, I think I might have, I forgot certain things, you know what I mean, to ask. Yeah, I mean, because you actually brought up the whole Quentin Miller thing. You actually brought my name up in it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and he was like, he was like, oh, no, that's a soft dude. I'm not going, I don't get no stripes off of that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I appreciate my name dropping it. That yeah, was cool. I did that because I'm like, you gotta, you gotta drop white people' name off sometimes. You know yeah. what I mean? So they know that you, you was thinking about them. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> we're so sensitive. <laughs> we care. Yeah. We care black. We need that black love. Yeah. Black <laughs> lives matters. <laughs> so the one thing that you know when I was listening to the interview that kind of stood out to me was that he said that people didn't really start hating on him until he got with Nikki. What's your take on that? Shit might be true. Because, you know, when you look at it, he was like, you know, at the top of the game. It was like Meek Mill. Meek Mill name was mentioned, all those, you know, those top young dudes. And then it was like the shift happened during that Nikki stage, you know what I mean? Him dealing with Nikki. But I also think a lot of the, the, the reason, the way people started, well, coming at him was because of, how he reacted on social media or certain things. So that's why the interview I feel is so good because he's not in an emotional state. He just able to say what he want to say and get it off his chest without being emotional. You're emotional, you immediate reaction every time running the social media, you start to look unstable. Like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with this dude? And I think that's what a lot of the fans did when they when, when Meek was doing shit. So him doing the interview like brought him like, you know, back to like, damn, y'all fuck with this dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I mean, he even talked about how he had to get off social media to just get away from just all the madness at one point because he hopped off Instagram and he... Yeah, he called it the circus. Yeah, it really is. Mm -hmm. It really is. I mean, I have to take social media breaks sometimes or else I start to go crazy. I start yeah, working. I'm always in the circus. I love the circus. Yeah? Yeah. I love the circus. You love all the fuck shit. I love all of it. All Every of it. Every bit of it. I'm so entertained. You know what I mean? I'll just be sitting there just... You know, I'll, I'll start debates on shit just to, you know, shit I might not necessarily even care about. I'll just, just start a debate on some shit and just, you know, pick it out, food for thought. I like to, you know, challenge people to debate. Yeah, I mean, like, I actually got some of my ideas from reading reading your tweets. You know, like, I remember I went on I went on a Twitter, and you actually retweeted this. I said, fellas, keep in mind that the baby you gonna have with her is gonna look like her before the plastic surgery. Yeah, sure, <laughs> one of the most true statements you ever said. Yeah, I got that idea from reading your tweets. Yeah, I'm like, this is something the tax though would say. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? It was a gym, though. <laughs> yeah, it was a gym. You know? Yeah, well, cause you 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 know you have these women that that look all perfect and shit, and you know mm -hmm. these dudes be going up in there raw, and they have these fucked up looking kids. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, oh shit, she actually looked like this before. Yeah, exactly. Wouldn't it be crazy if you could have kids with, with someone with plastic surgery and then like the kid would come out looking like the plastic surgery version? <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, it's sad out there right now. Yeah, it is. Shout out to all the ladies who um, getting the ass shots in a home, in a hotel room. Oh yeah, risking their lives. Off the interstate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we actually had one of the main girls. In here, the, the one the one who's giving the ass shot, see, ass she shot wouldn't time. say it, but she didn't deny that she was like Nikki's ass shot girl. Up and coming rapper and singer had her work done before she was in the public eye. People didn't really know who she was. She was smart, but she did it on the onset of her career. Her new look is all people saw. There are no old pictures to compare her to. So this is clearly not Nicki Minaj because they're, you know, old pictures to compare it to. I've had several Where'd clients... Where'd you see old pictures of Nikki? There's old pictures of Nikki. They're not old pictures of Nikki. When, from when? 
Uh, when she first started rapping, there's uh, there's pictures of her before her butt was big. How did she look when she first started rapping? Uh, when she first started rapping, um, well, you see, I was I was kind of around before she got signed and everything else like that. And how, how was she? Was she a tomboy? Uh, no, not really. I know I've known Nicki for a long time. You know Nicki Minaj. I do know Nikki. Okay. I haven't seen her in a long time. I mean, personally, but no, that that goes before then, sweetheart. That's actually when she first started. And uh, she actually went to jail because uh, I guess a girl got really sick, and uh, you know her, the the girl's boyfriend, you know the the ass shot girl's boyfriend turned on her, and and then she went to jail for like three years or something like that. There's some dangerous shit out there. But back to the meek thing. Man? Hmm? Was she from Atlanta? I think so. I think so. Do you feel that, that certain dudes started to, to go at Meek extra hard because he was with Nicki? Because maybe, I didn't... maybe industry dudes. You That's know, what I'm saying. Dudes that might have thought they had a chance. Or, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I always thought it was a nigga out there that could get Nicki. Like, I was like, I don't know how long Safari going to be. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, I understand as a man or whatever, but I don't. You know, you just don't know how long a dude like that gonna last. Well, in fact, I talked to a couple of people that were kind of close to the situation. I don't want to say who, and they weren't like directly close to it, but they were kind of around it. And they were all telling me that Drake really came at, at Meek because of Nikki. Yeah, it's probably true. That, you know, it. Drake, Drake had a crush on Nikki. Imagine you thinking you got this work because you gonna get all this time and. When she leave this nigga to be twerking, I'ma get her, and then nigga just come and snipe from out of nowhere. Pew. Just, you might be mad too if a nigga took your job, you know? <laughs> right, because in fact, I remember uh, Drake, like right when it was announced that, that Nikki was no longer with Safari, he like posted up a picture, you know, of him, basically like a, a cartoon of him making out with some big booty girl. It's like, oh, is it my turn now, or can we go now, or something like that. I remember mentioning that to Safari, and he was like, oh, I didn't even know he did that. Like, oh, shit. Nikki don't want no Drake, man. You don't think so? Nah, Nikki need a nigga to just, you know, just finish the shootout, and he came in smelling like gunpowder. You know what I mean? <laughs> she, don't, she don't want no. That's why she left Safari. Because Safari wasn't that dude. <laughs> Let me stop talking about that nigga, because... I like I Safari. Me and Safari are cool. I like cool. him too. I think he cool, but I just don't want him to say nothing about me. You know motherfuckers be in their feelings and they just be, yo, fuck you. And then it's like, all right, now I got to, you know what I mean? I mean, I personally, knowing Safari and hearing some of the stories about their interaction, I really felt like Nikki didn't really respect Safari. Mm -hmm. And I don't care how good of a situation you're in, to be in a relationship with another person where that person don't respect you, I don't care what you're getting out of it. If every day you just waiting for that person to just scream at you or talk to you like a like a child, like I don't care how how many private flights or how many Rolex watches you get in the process, you know. Especially as a man, I can't. I, I've dated one or two women that that you know were richer than I was, you know. And I I, didn't, I wasn't even rich back then. I mean, I, I just you know, had a few dollars, but like women who had money and I, I didn't really dig the interaction. Yeah. You know? Maybe never... you know you know, um you know, maybe he just wasn't what she was looking for no more. She might have liked him at one time in her life, but you know, things change in your life that'll make you want to change the people that's around you. You know what I mean? So maybe she didn't feel like, you know, he was for that no more. Well, they were together before she blew up. Yeah. Safari, I mean. But maybe she was with him when they was going to dance hall parties and they was going to Amazura together. <laughs> so it was cool. She don't want to go to Amazura no more. She yeah. don't need a twerking partner. So, you know what I mean? She went and, she went and got Meek. Well, Meek went and got whatever way it went. You know what I mean? I like how Meek basically admitted, he's like, yeah, that was my girl's tour. Yeah, I was getting 100000 a show. She was getting like four fifty. Yeah, like I understood. I understood what Drake was saying, you know, the point of it. Like, yeah, I'm on my own tour, you on your girl tour type shit. But I also understood what Meek meant, you know what I mean? Like, shit, why not? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he, he admitted that the song was, was hot. 
back to back, and he, you know, you gotta admit that that song is fucking hot. Shit was hot the moment I heard it. Yeah, yeah, it kind of grew on me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Very f moment I heard it, I was like, oh my god, please. <laughs> Yeah, well. Yeah, bridges and shit. That shit was well tailored. Like, Oh, and it had the little double meanings in it. You know, you got to look up who some of these people. You know, I learned the game from, uh, who did he say? You can never oh, check me. William Wesley. William Wesley. I had to look I up who that who was. I knew who it was already. So. Oh, yeah, I didn't know. I looked it up and said, oh, okay, this is like one of the big like agents, I guess, big NBA agents. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, he, he did it. And then, you know, he had the whole like double meaning, like it called back to back. And I guess that's when Toronto beat Philly. Yeah. Back to back, and he's, he's a little yeah. strategic motherfucker. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he was he was playing chess. I'm, I'm scared of Drake. <laughs> you scared of Drake? Certain people you gotta be scared of Drake. He's not a fighter. He's not a fighter, and he's powerful. He gotta be dangerous in some shape or form, fashion. You know what I mean? Well, I think that's what people don't realize is that when you look at people in positions of power, and I think a lot of street guys make this mistake. Is they'll look at a certain person and they think, well, I could take him in a fist fight, so he must be soft. Mm -hmm. And I can't name you too many people that are in positions of power who are actually soft. It just, you, you can't get here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't have Vlad TV for this long. You know, we're coming up on 10 years with all the hurdles we have to deal with on a daily basis and people hating or not liking us or trying to blackball us or do whatever, the fact that we're still here and we're still getting it, you know, is because I stand up for what I believe in. So are you saying you're a powerful Russian? Uh, I'm saying uh, <laughs> I don't back down. I don't back down. I don't back down. The, the one thing, and I was actually talking to my staff about this today, like when you look at, for example, a, a tax stone. Right, and like I was talking about you today, the reason why Taxstone is where he's at is because he's fearless. It's because he's he's willing to ask the questions that everyone else is scared to ask. He's willing to interview the people that people are scared to interview. Uh, he's willing to to deal with the issues that people want to avoid. And when you look at all these other entities that have been around way longer. Source, Double XL, Vibe, who who are supposed to have an advantage over over him and me, and they're just not really doing nothing. It's because they're too busy trying to be politically correct and trying to be friends with the artists and trying to get them for the cover. And you know, like I I literally have heard like I've had people that have worked for the Source here before, you know, who have done interviews and like the owner of the source would be like well don't ask him any of the tough questions you know don't, don't ask him anything that might upset him and it's like fuck all that <laughs> we're not doing that you, you need well you know i don't i don't know what be upsetting people so you know when i ask questions to people be like yo you asked the hard questions i was like that question was not hard but that's when i i got to realize how much pussy people it is on the planet yeah. that some simple shit is a hard question to them. I'm like, how is that a hard question? You just ask them a good question. You can answer it or you or you don't. You know what I mean? Like, what's the issue? They be like, you ask all the hard questions. I'm like, I don't remember asking a hard question. Well, think about it. Think about how many radio shows are out there in the U.S. Let's not even talk about the rest of the world. But let's just talk about the U.S., how many major markets there are with major... You know, radio shows, morning shows, everything else like that. Why is it with all these radio hosts doing the interviews with the same people over and over again, all you hear about is Tax Stone, Charlemagne, and Vlad? Mm. Think about that. When we're all interviewing the same people most of the time. In fact, they even get the bigger people a lot of times. Well, mostly because they're not good. A lot of them not good at what they are. They just attach to corporations. Yeah. Like Charlemagne is good. He'll be good off the Breakfast Club. Any way he go, he'll be good. Yeah. I watch his. I, I'm cool with Charlemagne. That's my man. Mm -hmm. I watch his interviews sometimes and get amazed because I'm like, yo, this motherfucker is good. Like, he's really good. Like, mm -hmm. there's people as you know what I mean. I'm like, 
watching different joints bouncing around. Cause sometimes I might put on your shit too. Like I go on Vlad and watch a couple interviews back to back, different shit or Breakfast Club, and then I look and I'd be like, Charlemagne is fucking good. Like every time I watch it, I realize that's why he at where he at. You know what I mean? Because and he he does read. He, he, that's why me and Shaw means that he does research. I don't be researching niggas. You know, I don't give a fuck about you. Uh, I research. I don't research. I like to talk to you, and, and you know, I'll I'll know some things about you, but I like to overall get a feeling of who you are. You know what I mean? On the podcast, I like to talk about you and give that feeling back to the audience. That's how people fans connect with them because they like, yo, man, I was you know we had, they had a real conversation. Like I appreciate him. Well, I don't. He dumb. Whatever, which, which way it might go, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah, but yeah so these dudes out there struggling. Shout out to all the, um, the struggling hip-hop publications out there, man. Be, <laughs> they, they, they write about my podcast and they say, such and such said on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, you know what the fuck podcast it was, you bitch nigga. But see, you know what? I never wanted no help from them dudes anyway. Like, I never, you know, I never, like, reached out to them people, no people for anything. So... You know, I always knew. I said, I'm going to just put the work in and they're and they going to have to fuck with me. That was always my plan. So that I used to ask people for shit like, yo, could you do this? Could you do that? And they just be like, I'm like, yo, what? Like, are you serious? Do you know how hard I'll go than you? So that's what, that was my game plan with everything. So now I don't tell nobody nothing. I remember I wrote some shit out, tried to sell a show to somebody. And niggas was like, oh, no. Uh, I went and shot the shit. Next thing I know, niggas was like, oh, my God, tax, can you call me? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then Complex picked it up to pull up. You dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it's just, that's just how it goes. So I don't care about pitching shit to people or, because everybody's scared. Everybody is fucking scared and frightened and pussy. And, but what if this? What if that? What if, listen, man, if my aunt had a dick, she'd be my uncle, my nigga. Like, <laughs> I don't deal with ifs. But that's why me and you kind of hit it off in the beginning. Remember, like, our first conversation? Mm -hmm. where we just start talking about all these people, and it's like, both of us like, man, fuck him, fuck him. I don't yeah. give a fuck about him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so-and-so said that about me. Oh, he said some shit about you, too? I ain't got no time to be caring about people that don't help pay my bills. Right. So when people call me and be like, such and such is mad at you for saying this, I'm like, so fucking what? Tell them they want to shut up, pay me. Pay me to shut up. Don't, don't be mad at me. I'm not going to shut up for you. I don't give a fuck about you. You don't give a fuck about me. Yeah. I, I remember a couple, a month or two ago, I was trying to get this artist that I've been on before, you know what I mean? Like, yo, I want to get him on my show, and the label was like, no, 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 they're giving me the runaround and shit, you know what I mean? And then now the people call today like, hey, we want to get such and such on my show. No, no, motherfucker. How about I was reaching out for fucking months, and y'all was giving me the runaround, your label people. That's why I don't like speaking to them. You, I, I see the artists. The artists be ready to do whatever. It be the people in the office mad at you and shit because they still don't understand you or understand what's going on with you or understand your following or your core. I'm like, nigga, like, this shit is not no joke, what I'm trying to do. like. Oh, yeah. No, we have this all the time. We just had an artist booked, and then that day they hit us up and said the label doesn't want us to interview with you. Mm-hmm. And since the label's paying the bills, we just had to take that. Yeah, you got to comply. But my thing is this, too. Like, don't fuck with me. Label, don't fuck with me. If I ask you for a particular artist and then you you, you telling me, oh, no, because of this and because of that and because of all this little whack shit. I just did an interview with Meek Mill. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. No, I just did an interview with Meek Mill. Me and Meek Mill been... Our little team's been going back and forth for the longest, you know what I mean? And I just did an interview with Meek Mill. Meek Mill took it upon himself to be like, yo, we ain't, we ain't got no drama. I'm going to do the interview. So how could anybody else that I don't got no issues with be like, oh, we're scared to do an interview with you? Why? Why would you be scared to do an interview with me? Gangster rappers at that. Why are you scared? Yo, th this is what I hear over and over again. People are scared to sit down with Vlad. Why? Over and over again. I keep hearing this. Motherfuckers be out there like, Vlad is the feds, he's, he, um, he asks questions, that, it's like, yo, my nigga, I can tell that you niggas are going to tell on your man in an interrogation room, because you can't even handle somebody asking you simple questions, you understand, about certain things, so if you can't handle a dude that's interviewing you, you definitely cannot handle, um, two people that you've never seen before in your life telling you about what your life is about to be. You understand? I could tell by the comments. I read it all the time. Be like, look at this nasty shit. He's going to tell. 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 Oh, yeah. I mean, people constantly call me the feds, Officer Vlad, and all that. And I'm like, okay. 
That's today right. I said that shit. I was like, yo, I was like, yo, yo, these bloggers is cops. You know what I mean? Or some shit. And nigga was like, yeah, just say at Vlad. I was, I wasn't even talking about Vlad. I was talking about one of these fake street bloggers that be trying to act like he some street dude. That nigga's a cop. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Which isn't me. I never yeah, tried to act like street dude. At the end of the day, it's not about the people we interview. It's about our viewers. Mm -hmm. The viewers are the ones that are coming back every day. The artists or whoever else might come around every so often when they need something. That's when they fact. need some publicity. The viewers are the ones that pay your bills. The artists don't pay your bills. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, if an artist doesn't feel that fucking with me is beneficial, then that's fine. It either means that we're not on the same wavelength or we just got to get bigger, which is fine. We keep getting bigger. Just put in more work. I don't be mad at niggas. I'll be like, I'm going to just put in more work. Oh, you don't fuck with me? All right, let me put in more work. I always been my, I always been my ideology with everything. In prison, you know, we're like, when you in prison... You get in the jail, like, dudes is, like, in jail right now up north in New York. Like, these dudes is fighting for status in gangs. Like, when they get up there, they want to be the status because they feel like they protected. And, yo, I got this status in this gang now, so I'm good. I don't got to do shit. I'm a big homie. I'm this, I'm that. Like, I was, man, I never, these dudes used to write their OGs and shit. Like, yo, could you give me this status? I never wrote no nigga. Like, I'm not writing no nigga to hire. I'm going to write another man to give me status in life. Right. Put the work in, then they call you. That's what happens every time. Put the work in, then they call you. I remember somebody told me a couple years ago, yo, you should intern at this record label. I was, I'm a grown-ass man. I can't intern. <laughs> yeah. I can't intern. I've never interned. I can't intern. I can't, I can't do that. I'm a grown man. Like, I can't do that. So they like, yo, so what are you going to do? I said, watch me. And I, I, I bust my moves and did what I was going to do. And I uh, skipped interning. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, if you put out quality shit, you're going to have other motherfuckers who are on the same shit going to reach out to you. Just like I saw what you were doing. I reached out. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, let's try it out. Put you on put you on my platform. Mm -hmm. It did numbers. Let's try it again. That's how me and Jamar were, have been rolling this whole time. Put them on. It worked. Just kept repeating. Mm -hmm. You know, and at any point where one of us does not feel that this is beneficial, we walk away. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's simple. People don't understand that because people, I, I think in, in this society, especially music, people are waiting for someone to put them on. And the day you realize that no one's going to put you on is the day that you're going to really start your career. Because mm -hmm. you know how badly I wanted to be on the radio, how badly I wanted to be on TV, how badly I wanted to be in the magazines or whatever the fuck else. And one day I just said, none of these people are going to fuck with me. And I don't care what the reason is. I'm going to build my own platform. And that's what I did. And now I could, I could put on whoever the fuck I want. And, and I'm competing with these big billion dollar entities. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing too. Yeah, I'm trying to take them out. <laughs> trying to take these niggas out. That's my whole goal. I wanted to be the leader of the new wave that was moving in. I felt like it wasn't nobody championing the new artists, the new DJs, the new radio personalities, the new VJs, whatever it might be. I felt like it was a clusterfuck of a whole bunch of old people that were trying to hold on to positions that they didn't deserve anymore. You know what I mean? That's like somebody right now that come to, they probably don't, might not like Vlad TV, but the thing is, is that it's like Vlad doing his job though. If you wasn't doing your job, you understand? Motherfucker would be like, yo, Vlad got to get the fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. He's not doing his job. And there's mad dudes out there that's not doing their job. They just surviving because of relationships. Oh, yeah. And then the name that they built over the years, they're not doing nothing for or, or, or they were put in position by a friend of theirs. Yeah, exactly. Where's the niggas not doing nothing innovative out here? They're not trying to do nothing new. That's why with me, you're going to keep seeing new shit. You're going to keep seeing me do new shit. Yeah. Like, it, it, I never limit your game to one hustle. Beanie Siegel once said that. Well, that's the thing. People always ask me, well, why you got to do them crazy titles? Like, why why you got to do them, you know, ask them crazy ass questions? Because it's like, well, I don't have a billion dollar record, a, a billion dollar radio station employing me mm -hmm. that's telling the label, you know, bring this artist on the show and we'll spin his records all over the country for the next month. You know what I'm saying? And, th and that's how... That's why the big artists have to do the radio stations because there's deals being cut where, yeah, do this, but we'll, we'll go ahead and play your record and we'll get your spins up and we'll get your, you know, your tour money up and your 
album sales up. We don't got that. We can't play your record. Mm -hmm. So we got to go all out every time. We have no choice. So if you don't like the way we do it, fuck it. Go do your radio stations. Do go do your little fluff piece. I'm good. Yeah. Little Wayne had an interview where he called Black Lives Matter some dumb shit. He said, "My life matters to my bitches." I think it's still trending today. <laughs> What's your take on this? Man, Lil Wayne been on drugs for so many years, you know, I don't even expect him to understand what's going on in the world, you know, and I feel like, you know, I was talking about it today and I say, yo, that's what white people do. They ask you questions and everybody was like, oh, but it was a black woman. I said, that don't mean that she black. That don't mean that. Because if you working for a white corporation that wants certain things asked a certain way or they want to create a certain rhetoric or put a certain, you know, whatever out, it's going to be certain questions asked. You don't ask Lil Wayne about Black Lives Matters. Lil Wayne only know what color his drink is. You know what I mean? Lil Wayne is going through money troubles and he's thinking about shit like that. He don't care about no Black Lives Matters. But you know, back in August, we had actually filed a video clip that we posted up where he's on stage at the title concert talking about Black Lives Matter. <laughs> you didn't know about this? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. He said, we are black America. Black lives matter. Clothes don't matter. Cars don't matter. Nothing else matters because black lives matter. He was on stage being filmed at a title concert saying that. And then a few months later, he talked about, I don't give a fuck about all this. He probably didn't at the time. He probably was on drugs. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, let Lil Wayne get high in peace. Don't start asking this motherfucker about what's going on in the world today. He evidently don't know. You know what I mean? Like, he knew that day, now there's a fuck Black Lives Matter, my lives matter. Like, you know, it's a dumb statement, you know what I mean? I'm still a Lil Wayne fan, but it's a dumb statement. So you think he made a dumb statement? Yeah, definitely. I, mean, I don't think there's anything particularly white in terms of the questioning that was, <laughs> that was aimed towards Lil Wayne. I know, you know, you're saying that it was a black interviewer, but it was a white corporation. I don't think there's anything particularly white about this. Oh this yeah, life. anytime you want, anytime you want to ask a Cameron something about certain things, or you want to ask a little Wayne things about certain things, or or I forgot who the other person was. So you're talking about Cameron on 60 Minutes? Yeah, where you, he, he said they what asking the people thing? that they know they they you think they didn't look up Cameron before they did that? They looked Cameron up. They seen he was some ignorant dude. They knew he was going to give an ignorant answer. That's why they got Cameron. This is what they want to put out. They know the answer already that they're going to get. It's going to be some crazy shit. So this is why they do it. So how do you feel about snitching? They know they hear your rap with you how you feel about it. They ain't got to ask you that question. They doing that for the world to I, see. I remember that. They, it, was, it was Anderson Cooper. And he said, if a serial killer lived Living next door to you, would you, would you tell on him? Would you call the police? No. Mm -hmm. What would you do? I would move. Yeah. If a serial killer lived next door to you, would you call the police? Nah, because he probably don't even want to kill me. He probably killing them people for a reason. I don't got nothing to do with that. Would you move? Nah, I don't got nothing to do with it. Pray good neighbor. Like, you don't know. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do? What but I you wouldn't call the police? Nah. If he was killing kids? We probably would have, you know, we probably would have kidnapped him. Let the kids beat him up with bats until he bled slowly out his ears and and weeped like a, a grasshopper on a window sitting up. <laughs> nah, but um Seriously, you wouldn't you wouldn't call the police if there was someone killing kids next door to you. Nah, if Jeffrey Dahmer No, nah, if I no Jeffrey if, if Dahmer I found out that, listen, I almost I almost called the cops on my neighbor. I ain't never almost called the cops in my life. Okay. I heard this little girl getting her ass beat every morning, like literally, like clockwork. Okay. Wake up in the morning, wake up, it's time for school. But you can hear, like, he already on some shit. Before she even complies or doesn't comply, he's already on it. Okay. And he kept, like, beating her. And I was like, it came to the point where I was like, yo, I don't want to press him. You know what I mean? And approach him like, yo, what the fuck you be doing? Like, that's his kid. I don't got nothing to do with it. So I was, like, in a real conflicted space. But I was like, yo, he might kill his girl down there. I hear her every morning getting so, her ass beat. So he actually was beating her? Yeah, he used to, he used to beat the girl up. Would you see her with like bruises and stuff like nah, that? No, I never. I don't be looking at people. I don't be looking at people, kids, and I don't be looking at them either. I don't look at people. I try to not look at people at all. Okay. So, 
this father was beating up his little girl, mm-hmm. and she was how old? I'm not sure, but she was like probably around eight, nine, maybe. Oh man! So she was a little girl. Yeah, she was a little not girl. Not a teenager. Yeah, a that's little why girl. I used to be. I used to be mad at the way he was talking to her. Period. And then the ass whooping to follow up. You know what I mean? And like I used to hear it so clearly that I would like hear everything, her reaction, everything. I could hear the chair move in the crib, everything. Okay. So it was just weird for me. And I used to sit there sometimes like, yeah, I might have to call the cops on this nigga. And that was the first time in my life I ever thought about calling the cops on somebody. But you didn't call the cops? No, I didn't call the cops. Um, I actually, um, I don't know if he kept doing it because I had ended up dipping, but you know what I mean? I I, I used to see the dude, but I never called the cops on him, but he was whipping his daughter ass. Did you ever approach him? No, because that's not my place. I I think as a man, I think I might approach someone over that shit. Hey, what if you'd have shot you? What if I would have shot him? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like you you go into a situation prepared for the fuck shit. Is how I look at it. But I I don't think that I could uh. Because what I noticed about bullies. Is that, they bully. The people that they get away with bullying, but as soon as an outside person come in, that bullying usually stops real quick. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because they don't know you. Oh, yeah. You know? Bullying is a comfort zone. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, I interrupted a lot of people's bullyings. You know what I mean? They, well, you know, stop that shit right now because you're not like that. You know what I mean? You mm-hmm. can tell, I told, you know, I said it on Drink Champs. Um, and people keep sending me the quote, but I just, I meant it like a lot of motherfuckers got to act like they want to die in order to live. <laughs> this is, this is a, a, it's a, it's a, it's a facade that people got to do. It's a smoke screen. It's a defense mechanism where they got to act like they crazy. Oh, he's crazy. Yeah. Die so they can live. What happens sometimes is motherfuckers don't care or motherfuckers don't know that you're acting. And you end up dying in the process. You know what I mean? Well, I'll, I'll tell you. I remember when I was doing the the Mac Dre documentary. Uh, well, for I was doing the American Gangster episode on Mac Dre, and in the process, uh, I was talking to a lot of the cops in Kansas City. You know, like the investigators about the case and everything else like that. And and one of the cops told me something interesting. He said, ninety percent of the people that you see with tattoo tears have never killed anybody." Oh yeah. He said they're strictly there to scare people. I don't even believe them. As soon as I see a nigga with tears on his face, I just start laughing at him. I just be laughing like, look at this nigga. <laughs> you done fucked up your ch- you done fucked up your chance to get a fucking manager position at McDonald's because <laughs> you wanna fucking put up two tear drops on your face. Yeah. Hip hop influenced a lot of fuckery. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh yeah. And uh, in New York, you know, Dipset was coming in, they used to wear a lot of red and like, you know, throw bees up. Like it created a new wave of bloods in New York City. You think Dipset caused the the surge of bloods in New York? Hell yeah. Really? Fact. Because they were the most popular crew and, yeah. and they were Dipset bloods. was those niggas. Like you wanted to dress like Dipset, you wanted to do what Dipset was doing. They was them dudes in New York City. They it, it was cause in, in New York it was like a lot of Crips at one point. Like it was Crips. Hmm. And then Jim Jones and them came through and Jewels and them they had all red and they was just in the videos wow and it just became cool to be blood. Where I seen a whole wave of Crips turn blood and a whole a whole bunch of dudes just turned around. It was like it was so commercial. Niggas grandmothers was throwing going like this and shit. You know what I mean? Like No, I feel I mean hip hop in general sort of just became blooded out. Like, like me and my man, um, who's a crip, one of my one of my really close friends, we're talking about it. How like the only crips that you see, like the the new, you know, you got Snoop and everyone, right, and Dog Pound, but the only new crips that you see in hip hop is like Schoolboy Q. Mm-hmm. That's the only new hot rapper who's gang affiliated who's claiming to be a crip. Everyone else is a blood. Yeah. 21 Savage, Blood. Yeah, and I think a lot of that had to do with Dipset, too. I think a lot of the New York influence spread to it because the Bloods and, sh- and the Crips always existed in L.A. Right. But the thing was is that when it touched New York, New York put a whole new everything to it, just like motherfuckers do. You know what I mean? I mean, you don't think it's it's the, you know, because at one point, the L.A. gang members started to spread out to, you know, set up shop in different cities, and, you know, they started getting locked up at Rikers Island and stuff like that. You don't think that had anything to do with it? No. No? No. The, blood, the Bloods was created on Rikers Island because the Latin Kings existed. And the Latin Kings was oppressing black people. 
So that's how the blood started in New York. Okay. So it ain't start causing no LA shit. Motherfucker just hmm. in New York say, yo, we blood and ran with it. Hmm. So Drake bought 21 Savage a Ferrari. Yeah. Drake is a very romantic dude, man. Romantic? Mad romantic. <laughs> what makes him romantic? He's a romantic nigga, man. Like, he sent Charlemagne bottles, a card. He Hand signed? Uh, hand signed, you know what I mean? Um, Charlemagne gave him some bottles back. Yeah, he bought him some bottles back yeah. um, at, the, at the concert. Um, mm -hmm. He got 21 Savage a Ferrari, man. Like, Do you think he actually that's bought too him? That's romantic for me. Do you think he bought him a Ferrari, or do you think he's just leasing the Ferrari and letting him roll with it? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Or, or do you Drake think is a player, man. Like, I feel like he would just straight up just buy it. Like, yo, that's yours. There you go. Yeah, just some straight player shit, some player shit. <laughs> right, because 21 Savage said, said, you know, I like both Drake and Meek Mill, but only one of them bought me a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, 21, 21 was in the, in the studio with Meek Mill when I was down there in Atlanta. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, 21's that dude. He's that dude, man. I, I don't know. I guess he got that many sticks to where you got to buy him a Ferrari. Well, and I think that our interview kind of helped cement him in that position you know the whole it's a knife <laughs> you know what i'm talking about yeah it's a knife <laughs> is that no, a, I, I love 21 music i just was playing his shit like right. i mean because in fact like remember when drake announced that he's doing a song with 21 savage he put a screenshot from our interview like mm -hmm. with him lying on on the couch with the with a pile of money mm -hmm. that, that was that was a flat tv interview yeah. you know th that became an iconic interview like it's at like two million views mm -hmm. it's crazy but i think the thing about drake and you could say this about people like Jay-Z as well, is like, Drake knows he's going to stay hot by always standing next to the hottest dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jay is notorious for this. I tell rappers all the time, like, especially up-and-coming rappers, like, they be so happy, like, when other rappers want to fuck with them or do shit. I'm like, you hot. That's it. It's not your friend. Yeah. You he hot. may not even like your music. Yeah. Might not even like your music. He just he just see an opportunity to stand next to some heat. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you might not be here next year. He's going to be here for four more years. You know what right. I mean? So, right, because 21 Savage is that dude right now. Yeah, he is. I like his shit, man. Take a I do, too. I like motherfucking shit. I like 21 Savage shit. I do, too. I told him. I was like, I'm a 21 Savage fan, my nigga. Like, oh, you told him personally? Yeah, I told him that. I always tell niggas when I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm still a fan of music. I think because I slander shit so much, <laughs> people just be thinking like, I slander people that I like. You know what I mean? Like, right. I don't just be like, you know, I really be fucking with people but joking on them. But, you know, the slander, it seems harsh. But if anybody know my personality, they know like, oh, Tax is joking. But everybody don't take it as a joke. You know what I mean? I was joking on Nicki like last week, you know what I mean? Like I, I always fucked with Nicki. I'm a Nicki Minaj advocate like for years mm. because I literally watched her grind from the bottom, like literally, you know what I mean? I remember when she first had a listening, like back in the days I was at this shit, I forgot, I forgot what spot that is. Remy was there, you know what I mean? Like I remember shit like that. So when I was in jail and I seen Nicki pop while I was in jail, that shit almost made me cry. Cause I was like, for real. Cause I was like, holy shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like I really seen her just on MySpace, the mixtape, you know what I mean? Like I watched her followers rise on, on MySpace, you know what I mean? Like yeah. this before Twitter. So I always an advocate for it, but I'll joke on her and shit like that. And then she got like these What's the fuck them shits is called? What, you, what they what her fans is called? Barbs. The Barbs. Them motherfuckers is crazy. Like, <laughs> niggas coming after me, going, finding pictures of my hairline from 3A. You fucking dickhead. Fuck you, black bitch. I'm uh, like, damn, my nigga, I'm sorry. But, yo, I actually fuck with Nicki Minaj. <laughs> yo, whenever I mention Lil' Kim in an interview, my timeline is filled with fucking bumblebees. Yeah. Like, literally, like, yeah, man, hundreds of man, fucking bumblebee man, comments. And bumblebee outfits. <laughs> yep, they be on it. You got to hand it to them, man. Like, I mean, like these super fans. And gay fans ride. Oh, gay, oh, gay, gay fans, fans, forget it. Forget I need it. some more gay fans. Y'all niggas it. is so supportive, my nigga. What the fuck? Yo, and, and like, and you look at these fans, and it seems like 
their whole life identifies with this person. Mm -hmm. Their fucking avatar is a picture of that artist. It's not mm -hmm. even them. Yeah. <laughs> you know Real what I'm fan shit. I love Lil' Kim. I always joke on Kim, and I, I love Lil' Kim. Lil' Kim is a legend. Yeah. But, you know, the jokes, people don't like them. Like, her fucking, her tribe is ridiculous. Like, ridiculous. Her shit might be stronger than Nicki. Even though I know Nicki got more files and shit, yeah. they don't stop. They, you said some shit about Lil' Kim in August. They on you until November. Oh, yeah. No, the, the, the fucking the, the Lil' Kim fans despise me and, <laughs> and do not miss an opportunity. Like, like, this interview right now will cause a fucking Queen Bee storm on my fucking timeline. And it's all gay dudes. Yeah, <laughs> and gay it's all dudes that'll shoot you. I won't be. I, I won't. I ain't saying nothing about Lil Kim no more. Lil Kim to get you shot. You think? About mistake. Just so somebody just got love for like somebody might just shoot you. Well, I mean, <laughs> Lil Kim's been involved in some shootouts. Shout out to Lil Kim. You know, I remember, remember there was the whole uh, CNN. Foxy mm -hmm. Brown, Lil Kim situation. That you know she went to jail over that shit. Mm -hmm. Then I remember, uh, I think Fifty Cent took a shot at her, at like a, on a Funk Flex freestyle, and I think they got shot at later that day. Yeah, shit is crazy. Yeah, Lil Kim's no joke. Shout out to Lil Kim. Shout out to Lil Kim. So Rico Reckless, did you hear the the hit 'em up freestyle? I heard about it. Okay, he goes and disses. Every Chicago rapper, mm -hmm. like including Lil Herb, Lil Baby, uh, fucking Lil Reese, I think Kanye, like everybody is 600 Breezy, uh, AOKD, like he literally goes down the line. <laughs> this is. Matter of fact, I did hit a record. I'm bugging. I heard it. Yeah. yeah. Lil Reese, Montana 300, Lil Baby, G Herbo, Chance the Rapper, Lil Dirk. Famous Dex, Spenzo, Chief Keef, Tail 600, Lil Mister, Katie Got Bands, King Louie, Ludfo, SD, Tato, Basta, Prince Dre, AOKD, Vic Mensa, Chance the Rapper, Common, and Kanye West. How you gonna diss Common and Chance the Rapper, yo? He's dissing everybody. Did he say why? Just on some hip hop shit. Oh. He said, yo, I love all the Chicago rappers, but fuck all y'all. I'm, I'm trying to get my position. Oh, you trying to get in. Trying to get in. And you know something? He got in. Because cause when I did the interview with him, every interview is like 200,000 views. Like, it's no joke. It's like, oh, shit. And this is a dude I never even heard of before that, that hit him up remix. And, and I'm going to be honest, like, I hella respect him for that shit. Yeah, you know, sometimes you got to use... um. People with sacrificial lambs. Yeah. As long as you're willing to remain the wolf. Yeah. You know, he talks about, you know, killing people, beating them up and shit like that in the process. But, you know, mm -hmm. it, was, it was all kind of like lighthearted. You know, kidnapping motherfuckers and everything. But it's like, I think two people took it personally. Like 600 Breezy and, and AOKD took it personally. And then AOKD, I think they ran up on him. <laughs> They ran up on him? Yeah. What they did to him? Uh, they, they ran up on him, looked like at his house. At his house? On camera. And then his little man, who's actually the, uh, his baby, Rico's baby mother's brother. Like, Rico wasn't there, but it was his people, mm -hmm. allegedly. <laughs> uh, they ended up beating up his, his baby mother's brother on camera. Mm -hmm. And they ended up kind of pressing AOKD on camera. Mm hmm Wait, so they beat Montana's baby mother brother? No, 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 no. Rico's baby mother's brother. Oh, Rico's. It's just too much rappers, dangerous niggas in Chicago for me. Just too much. How long you think he got to live? Uh, I think he's going to be fine. I mean, I hope so. I, I personally right? like him. That's cool. I personally like him. I like niggas like him. But, you know, um, sometimes... Sometimes not enough, um, not enough smarts. If it overrides your heart, it could lead to suicide. So, well, here's the thing: everyone, like before the, the gangster element stepped into hip hop, like that's what hip hop was about. 
you supposed to is battle rapping, this rapping, you know, the dozens, all this shit, like where it came from. Like, you know, I interviewed MC Shan. There was never a real battle schedule, but we did mad shows together. You get your money, I get my money, and we're gonna go in the back and talk crap like we always do. You know what I'm saying? It was for stage. No one got beat up. And, and, and KRS One went hard. Because they needed each other back then. They needed that tour. Right. Nigga don't need shit down. Nigga trying to end your career. He don't need you. These dudes are not getting 30,000 a show. They're, they're not. All these dudes are still hustling, still trying to get in position. Mm -hmm. you, know, all, you know, aside from the Chance the Rappers and the, and the Kanye's and so forth. Like, most of the dudes he dissed are still, are still, you know, hustling. Not struggling, but hustling. So it's kind of like, he came out and want some hip hop shit. Like, I, I, I got it. <laughs> I get it, but shit, you know, niggas ain't too friendly in Chicago, man. And I ain't even just talking about Chicago on the planet for you to diss everybody. You know, 50 Cent did it, you know what I mean? 50 Cent did it. But, you know, it's like... How to also, Rob. You also it, seen... He got the idea from How to Rob. Of course. But you also seen the quest that 50 had to take through that. He had to remain the wolf. Just like I said, you could use some people with sacrificial lambs, but as long as you remain the wolf, you know what I mean? And everybody ain't built to remain the wolf. Well, I mean, th th this dude seemed like a wolf to me. Mm -hmm. He don't seem like a soft dude at all. Yeah. We, we, we talked about him, you know. You can go back and watch the interview afterwards. And yeah, I'm going to check him about. out. Like his, you know, for example, one of the things we talked about was like his, his mom's house got shot up. So my mama had a lot of Christmas lights up in her window and shit. They shot all her shit out. They didn't skint her. She got the ducking, so she got skint on the thigh. My sister got shot in the back. Bullets came out of her motherfucking arm. And then I just get the call. Like, I'm in traffic and shit, and I just get the call. Like, you know, I'm talking about kill me. That's how I turned into Rico Reckless. That's how I got the Reckless on my name after that situation. The guys who did the shooting, did they ever get caught, go to jail, anything? I'm asking. R.I.P. Oh, really? So they're gone now? R.I.P. At the end of the day, when you go shoot up someone's house, you should be prepared to get killed. It's a lot of, you know, it'd be a lot of shooting up houses and shooting kids in Chicago. Like, Jesus Sad. Christ, Chicago. Can Kanye, like, walk through there and just... Nah. And sing... Nah. Ultralight beam one time and just make everybody guns rise into the sky <laughs> and then <laughs> throw the shits in the river. Like, <laughs> no, nah, that's not going to happen. But, you know, you talk about 50 Cent. You talk about how to rob. He didn't get shot nine times over that song. That was some other shit he was going through. Yeah, well, you know. How to rob did not get 50 Cent shot. No, nah, dude. In fact, how to rob got Jay-Z to respond to him. It probably could have got him shot, though. You know what I mean? Like, if he was, you know, it was some, he was talking about some, a couple, talking about big pun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he was talking about Wu-Tang. Yeah, like... What do you see? He say, uh, I'll snatch Ray Ghost and Rizzo for them funny-ass rings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bro, he was talking about serious people on it. He spoke about Missy Elliott. <laughs> I, I think my favorite line from that song, 50 said, uh, I snatch Kim, tell Puff you want to see her again, dance your ass down to the <laughs> new <laughs> ATM. <laughs> And that's when Puffy was dancing his ass nah, off. Nah, that's why the record was good, because he still was rapping. It still was witty. It was yeah. good. It wasn't just a, you know, all-out diss. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was a great record. But, yeah, I mean, a couple people were, were mad. I think I heard Ghostface, I think, was saying how he didn't like that shit. Mm. When you do a record like that, you got to be aggressive. You got to be a wolf. You got to be ready for the fuck shit. But at the end of the day, you should be able to stand behind your shit. You know? That's when someone asked me, like, What's the hardest part about getting into the hip hop industry? And you know, my answer was, you got to be prepared to stand up, and, and and deal and deal with, with the bullshit and people feeling a certain type of way about you and the street element and everything else like that. And if you're not prepared to deal with that, which most people are not, just keep your day job. Mm -hmm. This ain't for you. Mm -hmm. So what's up with you, and Matt Hoffa? Nothing, man. Oh, and then they keep keep talking about me. Like we we po we did the post, and I'm like, I know both of y'all, and I'm like, where did this come from? I didn't even heard of this. What happened? People was talking, saying his name. Uh, I guess Matt did an interview with, 
with uh, with Doggy Diamonds. Yeah. And uh, he said that he invited Tax Stone to fight him. And I honestly, like, I didn't even watch the video, so I don't even know what the fuck it's about. But what, is there some sort of issue with you and Matt? I don't got no issue with that nigga. You know, I be disrespecting the man there because I think he's a clown. You know, he be bullying dudes. And then, you know, when the white dude went in his mouth and beat him up, what's the white dude named Disaster? That's his name, Disaster, the battle yeah, rapper? The disaster That's question. the one who fucked him up, right? Yeah. Matt Hoffa was like, oh, they jumped me. They didn't, you know what I mean? I was like, whoa. Like, I was so confused because I thought he was like a Brooklyn nigga. You know what I mean? I'm like, we don't complain about getting jumped. If we outside doing shit to people, you punching people in the mouth and then you get jumped, you expect, nigga, you lucky you ain't get shot. You talking about you got jumped. So, like, so what? You know what I mean? So what? I mean, because he did hit. Too. I would have expected he, I would have thought he was going to try to hit me too. You know what I mean? You I mean, hitting you know, everybody he, else. He hit Sirius Jones in that one battle. Yeah. And, I mean, was it a sucker punch? Yeah. It, it was clearly Sirius Jones wasn't there to fight him. Mm -hmm. He hit him unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. and, and I even told him I felt that that was unwarranted. Mm -hmm. And when he told me the reason for it, I'm like, that's not a good reason. Like, you know, you just fucked your own up. Fucked up your own shit. Like I, and me and Math are cool. Like the, the my one and only battle that I threw that the killer. You, know, you think Math guy. is tough when you meet Math? You you look at Math and think that he's, you know what I mean? Do you think he's serious? I, I think he's serious. I think he's stand up dude. I think he's soft me, as baby. Me shit. and him have always had a cordial relationship. He's soft as baby shit, and that's why he came in. Picking on other battle rappers because you know that's a sport that you gotta you can't even probably be that aggressive to really be in that sport because it's a sport that's so touchy and they say so much crazy shit that you would have to take a lot. I always tell people Martin Luther King was a little bit stronger than Malcolm X. Hmm. You understand? What? Because Malcolm X, even though Malcolm X was for the you know you throw a stone, I'm gonna throw one back. You gotta be stronger to turn the cheek. You got to be mentally stronger to say, I am not going to react to what somebody did to you. Right, because MLK was saying some ass beatings. Th this is why I say a lot of us are weak at. I'm weak in that aspect where if you attack me, I will have to, like, fight you back. But, you know what I mean? This dude was picking on these dudes, you know what I mean? And then when it happened back to him, when it happened to him, it was like this big thing. And the hip hop culture and the hip hop this and the hip hop that. I ain't never heard hip hop so much in my life. That's when I was like, this dude is pump faking. The niggas, what is he, 6'1, 6'2? Six, six, like, no, he's, he's tall. He's taller than me. I'm 6'2. He's tall like 6'4. Like yeah, about 6'4 of pussy, you know what I mean? And it's like dudes like him. Dudes like him got to stop it. It's dudes like you who misrepresent the borough. You know what I mean? Because you out here. Niggas don't know you in Brooklyn. Don't nobody know you. Nobody know you, my nigga. Nobody knows you. You out here, you keep doing um, YouTube series and shit. And you, you a fake actor now because battle rapping just ain't working for you. T-Top cooked you. You know what I mean? You don't got no career. So now you keep just bringing up my name everywhere you go. And then that corny nigga, Doggy Diamonds... Like, I told him today, stop saying my name. Like, don't say my name. You police, my nigga. Like, leave me alone. You dig what I'm saying? These dudes are cops, and they want to keep bringing up my name in interviews and keep talking about me. I ain't, I don't say nothing about y'all. Leave me alone. I told Math sorry. He still kept it going. I said, I'm sorry, man. I, I'm sorry. You told Math you're sorry. Yeah, on Twitter. Like I said, it was like, I'm sorry. I didn't want, because I seen what it was. Like, he went and shot a YouTube video. Like, I was like, this nigga's crazy. Like, he's trying to make this some... Um, Publicity hip hop shit. I said what I was gonna say to you. You said what you was gonna say back. You said meet up. I was in Flatbush. I'm not from Flatbush. I said meet up. He ain't come. He's still doing interviews acting like he invited me somewhere and I didn't come. I don't wanna fight math. I don't want no beef with that nigga. I'm on the lane of progression. But stay the fuck away from me. Don't mention my name. I'm not gonna mention your name. I'm sorry, my nigga. Whatever I did to your pussy ass, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, nigga. No disrespect. That's not a little disrespectful. What? <laughs> you call him a pussy then you He is pussy though. But um, my thing is if you really pussy, just be like, yo, I'm pussy. Accept it. Ain't nothing wrong with that. People don't like being they self. That's what's wrong with the world. Everybody got to wear this mask and keep up this thing. But, you know, what you going to tell your kids when, when you're not really who you are? Like, it's certain things. Like, I feel like you can't lie. You lie to people you scared to. 
And so many people are scared of society, scared of the public. So they got to lie every day. They have to live a lie. Yo, I'm going to do this. I'm going to look rich today on Instagram. I'm going to sit on my man car that just bought the new car and make these, these 12 females think it's mine so I can get some sex out of them. I'm going I'm to post this watch up so niggas think I'm balling. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to um, take these dudes' bottles when they come to the section. You know what I mean? There's so much facades and smoke screens, and, and that's a part of it. Men thinking that they have to be oh, yeah. tough. And hip-hop, it's so many men. You Look, gangster rappers. Look at Slim Jesus, for instance. Slim Jesus came through and said, yo, I'm not like that. Everybody was mad at him for being truthful. I said, who are we? Who are we to not accept that this man is not like that and he's just acting? Who are we to not accept that this man is gay and he don't, and he don't care? Why do we care? You know what I mean? I'm all about promoting the fearlessness in people being they self, not fearlessness in you trying to scare people, fearlessness in you just being yourself. Because I fuck with real niggas. You dig what I'm saying? And when I say real niggas, I mean real niggas. I got gay friends that's real niggas. But you got some straight men that'd be like, yo, them niggas is gay. Like they. You got gay, gay friends? Yeah, I got mad gay friends. Mad gay friends? Yeah, I got like at least 15 to 20 of them niggas now. I'm in the industry. I, got I always had a gay friend. Gay Cor Everybody know tax, know me for being with Gay Corey. Gay Since Corey. junior high school. This that's, is a known fact. This is not no gay joke. I, we always call him Gay Corey because, you know, growing up, like, his name was just Corey. And then out of nowhere, one of the girls blew him up that he was gay. And then we just attached gay to his name. So we, to this day, we grown men still call him Gay Corey. I mean, I'll be, I'll, I'll be honest, right? Yeah. And I, I, I'm, I'm cool with gay people. Like, the, the, the concept of gay, like, you want to suck a dick, it's cool. Like, Listen, I don't care how you get pussy. Right. So how I'm going to care what you're doing no, with no. a dick or with anything right, else right, in right, the right. world. But here's, here's my point, right? I, I'm all good. Gay marriage, gay this, gay that, gay rights. I'm 100%. Do you. But I, I just haven't really been able to to really have any gay friends through the course of my life. Mm -hmm. Because I feel that whenever I've started to sort of associate with a gay man, at some point, there's some sort of weird emotional outburst that happens. <clears throat> what do you mean? It'll be like, I had a gay uh, real estate agent. And uh, something happened that he didn't like, and he, he called me up and started yelling at me like, like, a, like a girl. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 I see what you, you mean. see where I'm going with this? Yeah. It'll yeah. be like, I, I'll try to either do business with a gay dude or just kind of form some sort of relationship, like, you know, whatever, with the person. And something will happen. And, you know, dealing, you know, and I, I understand when women do it, but it'll be like some sort of reaction will happen. And the way they come at me is the way a girl would come at me, mad, emotional and yelling and screaming. And it's like, you know, I can't, I can't deal with this with another man. And I just end up just backing away. You know, I'm like, I'm cool, man. I just can't do it. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, though. No, I know what you say. Does gay Corey do this? No, um, a couple, well, a couple gay dudes I know that I've noticed they do deal with a set of emotion that masculine men don't. Yeah, you know what I mean. And, and that, that's my stumbling. Like when I get to that point, I just say, I, I can't, I can't really work with this person. No mm -hmm. But you've dealt with this. No, I've dealt with it. I'm cool with it because I, I understand it now. You know what I mean? The thing is this. It's like, you know, I like women. You know what I mean? So, you know, if I want to go out and hang out and look for women, I'm I'm, co I'm be with my, my regular dudes that, that we do that with. You know what I mean? I can't necessarily go out with this dude and he's looking for, for gay men and we might not necessarily be in a, a gay men atmosphere. You know what I mean? I can't go with my gay friend to the gay bar. You know what I mean? Right. And yeah, I get in there because I ain't gonna know what to do. Like I'm being there, like you know what's going on. <laughs> you ever been hit on by a gay guy? Nah, thank okay. you. No, I'm lying. I'm lying. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I had a gay dude. I was in Israel. A gay dude walked up to me, told me something in Hebrew that I didn't understand, and started biting on my shirt, like my what? shirt. What? Just, Holy just went, shit! You too sexy for your shirt. Yeah, I was too sexy what for my hell? shirt, apparently. And. and uh, I got scared. Like, honestly, like, I was like, yo, like, I just had to just walk away. It wasn't even an anger thing. Like, you know what I mean? I think if you're secretly gay and, you know, I like the dudes who hate gays and want to bash gays, I think they're all really gay and they just can't yeah, deal with that. Yeah, it'd be kind of scary. Like, yeah. when they get mad serious, like, Why are you nigga, so angry? nigga be busy doing something like, else and then they be like, throw these dirty nap like, yo, yo. Like, like, like Jaheem. Mm -hmm. Jaheem always goes fucking level 10 when someone accuses him of being gay. 
You know what? Well, I don't know. Because I know me. Well, no. I mean, remember the, the, there was an incident with Charlamagne. Yeah, what they, what they said. But then years ago, there was also an incident at Hot 97. Yeah. And I was talking to Ebro about this, and he confirmed that it happened. It was like they accused him of being gay. I mean, it might have been a joke, and he literally like flipped over. Like yeah. he, he was going to break one of the monitors. And I remember. Was, I was listening to the radio that yeah. day. I remember that. Yeah. That's Clearly. what I'm saying. It's like, yeah. like, why are you reacting so crazy for someone accusing you of being gay? No, I understand that because, you know, it was a point. I remember my homegirl, my homegirl hit me and she was like, yo, um, they on some blog saying you gay. No, no, she ain't say that. She said somebody said you gay or some shit. I was like, it's like, what? I'm like, who said that? But where I'm from, you know, in prison, people use that as a weapon against you. Yeah. You understand? They'll be like, yo, such and such is gay. And you're going to get cut for being gay. If you in a gang in jail and somebody says that you gay and they go, they don't need no proof that much. All they have to do is see you talk to the gay dude two, three times and they gonna just slap it on you. Yeah, we seen him sneak in the cell. You know what I mean? Some crazy right. shit. And yo, you'll get, you'll fuck around, get stabbed up with some shit behind that. So for me, that's where it came from with me when it was like a gay, like what? Well, you called me what? So in my head, like it was like, that's the most dangerous thing you could ever do. Right. Because, is do that. But I had to realize I was in civilization and I was like, holy shit, I'm bugging. You know what right. I mean? Right. Because from what I understand, the most disrespectful thing you could say to another man in prison is suck my dick. <clears throat> Inviting another man to your dick is level 10. Yeah. In fact, I interviewed Chi Ali. He basically told me like, I was dead and he ended up telling me you could suck my dick. Over the phone? Over the phone. And um, I was like, well, all right. I went up there. I get the throg's neck. I go to the avenue, like it's, if you know Throgs, like it's one, 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 like strip on, uh, what is that, Dewey? That's Dewey, right? Yeah, and I go to Dewey because I know he's always out there. That's where he hustles at one night. So I see him on Dewey. Um, we exchange a few words. You know, he's talking some gangster shit, I'm talking some gangster shit. Did, did, he, did he threaten you at that point? Um. It happened so fast. I don't know that he threatened me. You know, he turned around and just was talking shit. Like when I ran up on him, he was like, "What? Like, what? Well, yeah, yeah, you know." I backed out and clapped him. Like to me, I don't even understand that shit. Like to, <laughs> having someone tell me to suck their dick is just to me just kind of funny sounding. <laughs> like, you, you know, know it's, but, it's a lot of things that I've I've grown out of becoming an adult because suck my dick was always the trigger words for certain so, things. So you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know exactly what so you're talking about. So if a man tells you to suck his dick, you're going to go crazy. No, I'm not. You because to suck my dick actually means that you want to do something or you want something done to yourself. So it's like a suicide word. It's almost like a white person calling a black person nigger. If a white person was to be like, yo, you fucking nigger, I would literally look at him and laugh because I know at that moment in time he don't care about his life. You know what I mean? And he might actually want me to do something to him. I'm not going to do nothing to you that you want me to do to you. You're not going to trick me out of my freedom. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Okay. And that's what a lot of people do. And, you know, he might not, he might have really felt that way. He might have felt like I was a nigga. Cool. Can't no words do nothing to me. They want you to react. You react and they be like, oh, this black guy whipped my ass. He called me white and you end up with the hate crime. You dig what I'm saying? Right. You're the fact that he calls me. you that doesn't matter in a court of law. Yeah. You don't, you're not going to trick me out of yeah. my freedom. E even, even if you had an all black jury. Yeah, it don't they, matter. They still want to quit. That's my whole thing with, with, with those the, those hate crime laws because all a person got to do is throw a word in there like and be like, yo, he said, you, you, you black motherfucker. And, you know, I might be a black motherfucker. This dude could have been angry at the time. You know what I mean? And just been like, oh, Yo, he could have been describing me. That's like me saying that I'm fighting a fat dude. I'm like, you fat motherfucker. Like, you fighting a gay dude. You like, you gay motherfucker. But because you said that, it turned into a hate crime. Yeah. You know what I mean? So them hate crime laws is kind of like, you know what I mean? So, so what Shaking. is it about suck my dick, though? Actually, I, I just don't get it. Explain it to me. Well, well, so, well. The, the 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 world that we grew up in, which is a homophobic world, okay. saying suck my dick to another man, telling him to perform a sexual act on you, is like the, the lowest form of disrespect. But, but but doesn't that make you gay also? What by saying suck my dick? Yeah. Nah, you know you 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 actually you know you you emasculating them. You taking his masculinity away by saying that's why dudes in jail do shit like a motherfucker on a vial, he'll slap your ass. You know what I mean? Like. Ain't nothing gay about it. Like, you a bitch. 
and yeah, you don't do nothing about it, then you a bitch. Yeah, but slapping the dude's ass and having the dude suck my dick, I think is much different levels of gay dumb right there. Like, you know, <laughs> well, I don't, you know, they don't necessarily like, mean like, to suck like, my I dick. I can slap a dude's ass. I think if you try to suck their dick, they might attack you. <laughs> <laughs> They're asking or, you to. Or, or is it, well, I mean, or is it like, you know, like how you have these weird prison rules where it's like, if you're fucking another dude in the ass, you're not gay, but if you're no, getting fucked in the ass. I don't know nothing about the prison rules. But you know what I'm talking about, though? No. No? no, no never heard <laughs> I've heard that before. I've heard it being said, but I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> I don't even know how that's even. Right. Right. If you're pitching. Anything you're doing with a man. Sexually is gay, right? If you a man, that's right? Gay. Getting your dick sucked by yeah. another man. I had girls tell me I'm not gay, but she licked my pussy. I'm like, you gay? You gay? You gay, yo? Right? You gay? Am I not gay if your your fucking brother come in here and you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that's gay. That's gay. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. It is what Shout it out is. to the gay people. I need more gay supporters. Listen to Tax Season comes out every Wednesday. You had uh, tweeted out this article. Where uh, I guess uh, a New York crip had uh, done so much Bank of America fraud that he actually tattooed Bank of America on his arm. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy, yo. The crip's been wowing all week, man. Bonton told on everybody. Who? Bonton, a rapper that? from Brooklyn, Krill Gates, just testified on all his friends. Um, he was um, a big. Because Brooklyn, crip. Brooklyn's mostly crip, right? No, no, mostly blood. It's a lot of Crips, though. It is. I guess like maybe, maybe the Crips are a little more popular because you got the Bobby Schmurders and Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Ain't no popping blood rappers out there right now. <laughs> In Brooklyn right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, so this dude ended up telling on everybody? Yeah, he told on everybody, man. A friend of mine, I was sending him money in jail. Really? Yeah. I was looking out for a couple of my friends. You know what I mean? Was, thought he was a stand-up dude. He got on the stand and testified on a whole bunch of people. Right. So these people... I guess now they have cases against them. Yeah, they own the feds right now. Testified on made up stories. Like a lot of stuff wasn't even true. You know what I mean? Made up shit. You know, being selfish. Do you know uh, Brother Polite? I spoke to Brother Polite on the phone. Yeah, he, he was a crip. All right. Yeah. And he talked about, you know, having to go through the steps to kind of become conscious. I was still gangbanging, but I was more get, coming, growing into the consciousness then the gang ship, and then trying to find a way to communicate to my brothers that pretty much raised me in gang culture since I was young, like in my 13 year old age, up until that time, like yo, you know, coming to this consciousness. Leaving, the, leaving his whole life behind, and, you know, he had a very hard life in the process. He didn't have any parents. He didn't meet, he didn't meet his mother until like, I think he was like 20, and she died a week later. Mm. He had no father around, or anything else like that. Um, but what, what makes you tattoo Bank of America on your arm after frauding Bank of America? Some of these niggas is crazy, you know? And I, I've, I've been seeing that tattoo. They've been was joking on them, like, on Instagram and shit like that. Do you know them? Nah, I don't know them. I don't know anybody. I don't know none of these niggas, and I don't want to know them. <laughs> you know what I mean? If these niggas say they know me, they lying. Well, well you got, you got this, this new breed of... Social media gangsters. Yeah, they exist. It, it's new. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't even, around five years ago. Even, even though you had social media five years ago, you didn't have it five years ago. Yeah. The social media gangster is like a new breed of you know, something. Social media is the new form of communication. It's like before you probably would have had to go to a dude block. Yeah. But now you could just post it and tag him. Oh, yeah. And he going to get the message. And I feel like that's where a lot of gangsters, uh, uh, the, the line is being crossed with the streets and the internet. Like, I could see if an issue started on the internet and it turned into a crime, but you dudes bringing crimes on to the internet. Well, we just put up a clip uh, with Rico Reckless, and he said, and, and th this is really gonna resonate with a lot of people. And then that, the social media fucking Chicago up. Oh my God. You wanna talk about that social media getting, it, social media get more niggas killed than anything else. I, I could believe that. I could believe that. Yeah. I could believe that. Motherfuckers popping shit. They on drugs. They talking shit. Motherfuckers got to... You got to rep now because 
somebody was violating you in public. So that's what everybody deals with these oh, these yeah. things where, you know, that's why it was so big for me and Meek to do the interview because, you know, we was throwing shots at each other and shit like that. You Did he throw a shot at you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what yeah. do you say about you? I don't even want to talk about that. Okay. Fair I enough. can't actually. But you know what I mean? But, um, <laughs> you know Okay, but I mean? he threw some shots at you back. Yeah, so, you know, it's just a, a thing. But, you know, when you grown men... And you understand, like, yo, I don't necessarily want a problem with this dude. And it's vice versa. It's just yeah. ain't no issue. Well, I, I, I think no that, that uh, the one thing that, that I thought was dope about our last interview, and we had just put this up, and you retweeted it, mm -hmm. was that you admitted to waving the white flag with the yeah. Dream Chasers. And, like, most street guys would never say no shit like that on camera. Niggas not street guys, man. Niggas <laughs> not street guys, man. I told you, man, these dudes is kids. Yeah. They have to, they gotta act like they wanna die in order to live. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Nah, I they feel have you. to keep the facade up that I'm tough, I'm ready to kill, I'm willing to die. Yo, both is wrong. You shouldn't be, you know what I mean? Right. Either way, like. No, I feel you. And I remember when we did the title, I'm like, I put the title up and I was waiting for the phone call from you. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, yo, why'd you have to put up that title? But I'm like, you know, I'm, you know, but you retweeted I'm it. Yeah, I'm secure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm myself. And this I'm is why I fuck And this is why I fuck with you. These niggas not secure. They dealing with, these niggas got to paint pictures. I don't got to paint no picture for nobody. Do you know how? I can say I waved the white flag and still smack a nigga right now. Like, <laughs> waving the white flag does not mean you pussy. Right. That means you understand something. Like, a grown man, If just like I said, I was always a Meek Mill fan. I was saying shit about Meek that I just felt, oh, I'm like, oh, you want to rap about is your Roly. I wasn't the only one saying that. It was other Meek Mill fans saying that. You know what I mean? Do you know how many times I deal with someone, usually a rapper, that I interview? They say certain things on camera. We put out the clip with the title of them saying those things. It's never out of context. Mm -hmm. It's what they said and it's what they meant. But it was, you know, what we felt was the most interesting part of that particular clip. They get fucking angry. They reach out. They never want to interview with me again. They talk shit to the really labels. Pussy. They really pussy. They they said yeah, some yeah. shit that they mouth shouldn't have said, and now they got to deal with the backlash right. of it. So they sitting there like, yo, edit this or edit that. Right. Or take, you know what I mean? Because Let me tell you, I interviewed Jadena. Mm -hmm. We had one of the dopest interviews that both of us had. He walked out saying, yo, I love... like." He had to go, and he was like, yo, I wish I could stay longer because this is such a dope-ass conversation. Like, this is great. It was our first interview. Like, he went to Stanford. I went to Berkeley. So, we was connecting on, like, the, mm -hmm. on the intellectual shit and the social and racial shit, blah, blah, blah. And one of the things he said, you know, was that where he grew up in Nigeria, uh, him and his family were kind of light-skinned, and they were more of a target for kidnappers, because in Nigeria, people think that light-skinned people are rich, so it made them more, you know, uh, more valuable for kidnappers. So we put that out. This became the number one trending topic in Nigeria. <laughs> it got so big that this like comedy newspaper, like you ever heard of the Onion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, Nigeria has like this equivalent of the Onion, like the Onion put the. The Nigerian Onion, whatever the fuck it was called, put out this whole story from the Nigerian Kidnappers Association saying how offended they were by Jadena's comments and how they kidnap people of all different shades. <laughs> they don't just discriminate. Yeah, that's a how just thing. yesterday they kidnapped a dark skin man and got a lot of money Shout for him. Shout out to the kidnappers. You know man. what I'm saying? Don't ever disrespect or discredit. Right. Jadena is still mad at me to this day. And after the interview, you went to Nigeria and did shows out there and did interviews on Nigerian radio. You know, they're, of course, too scared to ask them about that. Mm -hmm. You know, they pussy out there. You know, the, the radio people are pussy mm -hmm. out there. They're proud uh, white and kidnapped. They're talking about they pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but what, what I'm saying is... Were you trying to say black people were pussy just now, Vlad? I never said that. No, I'm fucking with you. <laughs> never said that. Uh, but I'm saying, like, he's still mad at me to this day. Mm -hmm. He's still mad over some shit that he said. It, it blows like my fucking mind. No, I'd be like that. I, under, I understand niggas, man. They dealing with that. They frightened, man. They so afraid of the unknown. That's what all these. I don't care what it is to be afraid. I don't care what. I don't. I don't gotta know. As long as I know what I'm capable of and what I know how to do, who am I afraid of? You know right. what I mean? Who am I afraid of? 
My pops is Sun Tzu, my nigga. Like, hey, I respect my shit. 